Are you being baited into reaction in an argument or after being gaslit by someone? Toxic people will often try and trigger you, okay? They will find your triggers and they'll start pushing them like they're buttons, okay? They will deliberately bring things to a boil, okay? In any kind of disagreement, any kind of conversation that starts getting edgy or uncomfortable or, you know, going downhill, so to speak, they will bring it to a boil. They will push your buttons. They will trigger you knowing the things about you that are easily triggered, right? They may know that you've had toxic relationships in your past and they may know that you've had trauma or whatever it is and they will push buttons on those tender, uncomfortable places just to get you to react. They will lie, they will project, they will gaslight you and watch the reaction start happening. They will push and push and push until you get to the point of reactive abuse. My name is Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand and heal from toxic, narcissistic people in your life. So reactive abuse is not you abusing the narcissistic person and them being a victim of you being a bad person. Okay, so when I talk to people in coaching, generally, people often take it as, I was pushed here. How did I let them push me here? I recognize that I got reactive. I don't know how to stop my anger, right? Okay, so this is the thing with reactive abuse. It's meant to do this. It is highly effective. It's meant to take the focus off the toxic thing that narcissistic person did, point the finger back at you as the perpetrator so that it shuts down the actual conversation and you are now left holding all the burden for what happened in the conversation. The narcissist is doing this to play the victim. Then why do they want to play the victim? To get away with something, to get away with it, to be able to not take accountability. I mean, it must take some energy to not take accountability. When you know you did something, because we know that most of the time they know they're doing something. They know they're not being nice to you or not being thoughtful or they're not, you know, they don't really care about whatever it is is going on with you. And they can see in your face that something's wrong. And they know cognitively that you're upset. I did something. You're upset, right? But it must take some effort to shut off that accountability. And I believe that sometimes narcissists will do this tactic of getting you to react so that they can say, see, now I would have taken accountability, but look how you're acting. I would have, I would have said, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to say not sorry. Now you're so toxic. You're so abusive to me. Now this can happen also in situations where we're talking about institutional narcissism or communal narcissism or group narcissism, where a group of people will get you to react. And oh my gosh, at that point, you're singled out, right? You're singled out and you get reactive because you've got boundaries and you're not gonna let people talk to you like that and you're not gonna allow this situation to go on, right? And so instead of taking those boundaries and sh shutting down, becoming stoic, keeping away from the toxic people, we engage. And we engage because we are reacting to being hurt, to being attacked, to being confronted in a way that is unfair and unjust, all right? And when you're in a group setting, you've got more than one person creating this reactivity in you. And then you have the spreading of lies that you are toxic, you're dangerous, you're horrible, you're this, you're that, among groups of people who then gets to other groups of people. And so you are sort of, part of what becomes the smear campaign because of the reactivity. It is so challenging. It is so dysregulating and on purpose that people push you there, that narcissistic, toxic people push you there. And then I guess what we're seeing in all of this with reactive abuse is that it's really time to get out. It's time to get away from the toxic person that is pushing you to reactivity. Once this reactive abuse starts, 
I don't really hear very often of it pulling back and becoming nothing. Sometimes people learn to use techniques to avoid and get away like gray rocking or similar types of techniques to not engage, right? And so they are able to change the dynamic. It doesn't change the fact that the narcissist is still gonna gaslight you, still gonna project and do all the horrible things they do, but it does change your reaction to it, okay? So that is one technique. If you are finding yourself very reactive to a narcissistic person and you feel that it has gotten to the point of reactive abuse, learn to gray rock, learn to shut it down. It doesn't stop them from doing their end of things, but it stops you from engaging and becoming part of the issue, the problem, the toxicity in the relationship, okay? Remember that there is no such thing as healthy within a toxic relationship. You can't be in a healthy relationship with a toxic person because the toxic is always there. So if you're adding to it and then the whole things, and then you just feel toxic and you feel horrible about yourself and you feel like, ah, oh, this isn't me, I don't wanna be this way and you're tired of raging and it's time to get away, then seek help, get away, find your way away from it. If you can't get away from it, if it's institutional or within a community that you can't leave, Find the coping skills, like I say each time, to fortify who you are for yourself and to learn to step away from it with boundaries and how to hold boundaries without anger. So keep watching these videos, hit the subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next video.